when I got when I got filled with the Holy Spirit when I was 16 years old, I, I when I got saved, I was in a Baptist church, and um, but when I was 16 years old, I met some spirit filled kids, and and they I had uh, I was a state level gymnast, and I had blew my I'd blown my knee out, and they said to me, Oh well, God made you; He can heal you. And I was like, oh, yeah, well, that makes sense. So they just prayed for me, and I got healed, okay? So then I went home to tell my parents I didn't need the knee surgery that was scheduled. And my parents rolled their eyes, and they had this look on their face like, oh, my God, my daughter is a religious fanatic, okay? <laughs> and I still went through knee surgery, and the, do- the, the final thing was the doctor says, I don't know how I could have misdiagnosed you because there was nothing wrong with your knee. And it, it was just built up of testimonies to my parents, well, at 16 years old, when I got filled with the Holy Spirit, um, I, I had a dream. I, I had a visitation from the Lord, actually. It wasn't a dream. But I was praying by myself in my room, and the, the Lord spoke to me in an audible voice. And that was my first encounter with anything about the voice of God or the prophetic. I got saved in a Baptist church. Do you remember me saying that? Okay, and they didn't believe, back, this Baptist church did not believe in the move of the Holy Spirit. And so nobody had told me that God was still speaking today. So number one, when I was on my knees praying in my room, it shocked me that God was speaking. I was like, whoa, what is that? But then even more was what he said to me. Because this is what God said. He said, the plans that you've made for your life are not the plans I've made for your life. And he said, instead of going to that university. I already had a full ride scholarship to a university. Instead of going to that college, he said, I'm going to send you to Bible college. And I thought, oh, my parents are going to love that. Okay. When you get there, you're going to meet a man. And if my husband was here, he would say a handsome, anointed, wonderful man. Okay. (laughs) He is. Yes. And you're going to get married young. Again, something my parents will love. And the Lord says, I'm going to thrust you into ministry and I'm going to send you to the nations of the earth. And sometimes he'll preach, and sometimes you'll preach, because I'm going to make you a team. Right there, God laid out my entire life in one prophetic word. The voice of the Lord is powerful, I'm telling you, and it is a force. And so, after that point, I I changed the plans. My parents were not happy. They negotiated every which way they could. Um, but, uh, but But I went to Bible college. I met my, my future husband the first day on Bible college campus. But let me back up for just a minute because basically that prophetic word set the course for my life. So I went to my Baptist pastor to tell him I was so excited. God had spoken to me. God had given me the plans for my life. How many know God knows what your life is supposed to be? Okay. I was a straight A student. My parents felt like I was certainly not going to live up to my potential. I think they're happy now, but they, they certainly were concerned that I was, this is what they said to me. They said, They said, when you became a Christian, we were concerned because you were throwing your mind away to believe all that stuff. But now that you're wanting to go into ministry, you're throwing your life away. Isn't that interesting? So I run to my Baptist pastor. I don't have anybody else to talk to about this. So I run to my Baptist pastor, and I tell him what God said to me. He drops his arm around my shoulder, and he says, girly, That was not God because women don't preach. And then a few days later, I was kindly asked not to come back to my church. Why am I telling you this story? Because there's a price to pay to follow God. Your price is going to look different than my price, and I'm telling you what I paid years and years and years ago. But let me just show you the faithfulness of God. God spoke to me. God gave me a word. How many of you have a word? How many of you have a word about your destiny, about your future, about things that God's spoken to you, about what your life is going to look like? I I didn't have any paradigm for what God was saying to me. I'd never seen a woman preacher. I'd never seen a woman do much of anything in the church except play the piano and sing in the choir and maybe teach Sunday school, okay? But, But I... but I, want you to, but I want you to know that when he told me that and he dismissed me, it was probably one of the hardest things I'd ever gone through, one of the best things that could have happened to me, okay? Because I didn't, I didn't understand. But I went to another church about a week and a half after I was asked to leave the church, and I was visiting some church with my new spirit-filled friends because my old friends were told they couldn't have anything to do with me. And they were told that if I, that to not even speak to me, 
So these were, I mean, God has actually restored all those relationships, but, but they were, but I was completely cut off because they really believed that I was in a cult. They really did. They believed that I was in a cult. And so that was the only, they came to my parents, my unbelieving parents and told my parents I was in a cult. And so my parents wanted to restrict my, um, my church going. They had, they'd already wanted to restrict it. Now they had an excuse to restrict it. Um, but my parents had made this mistake in raising me is that they, they had a philosophy of supporting the child's decision making. They reiterated this over and over. You support the child's decision making. And so I just said to mom, mom, you've raised, you said that you would support my decision making. So I kind of used their upbringing against them. Okay. Um, but anyways, I went to this church two weeks after I got thrown out of the Baptist church. And it was a charismatic, it was a hippie church. I call it the hippie church because the entire worship team looked like ZZ Top. Okay, they had like, they had, had beards that came all the way down here. They would fit in really good today. They all had holes in their jeans that weren't put there on purpose. Okay, and none of them had shoes on and they all rocked out on guitars. Okay, it was like the ZZ Top church. Okay, so the pastor was a, a, a drug dealer that had gotten saved and was preaching the gospel and and it was a wild crowd, okay? If my parents saw these people, they definitely would keep me from going to church, okay? But I came into that church, and at the end of worship, the pastor got up, and he pointed his finger at me, and I got my first prophetic word. And he said, he said, the Lord told me to say to you, you'll preach the word, and signs will follow. Now, he didn't know what I'd just gone through. But I had my confirmation. I went to Bible college. I met my husband. We, were, we started pastoring a church two months after we got married. He was 21 and I was 19. I still think, God, what were you thinking? <laughs> okay, <laughs> We did not know what we were doing. But we've been in ministry now 38 years, full-time ministry. And we tra- we've traveled to over 60 nations. And sometimes he preaches and sometimes I preach because we're a team. God, see, see how the voice of the Lord prepares a way for you? But let me tell you kind of a, a cool culmination to this whole thing. And, and I, I'm, I'm talking about we just we don't know the effect of what we might consider a little word that we give or a little prayer that we pray. So that man that gave me that word, his name is Eddie Brown, Pastor Eddie Brown. And last year I was preaching in Columbia, Missouri, 40 years after that word. 40 years after that word. I'm preaching in Columbia, Missouri, 9.15 at night when who walks through the back door but Eddie Brown. And I recognized him. I'd seen him a couple times like in, in the 40 years. And I recognized him immediately. And I stopped preaching and I said, oh my goodness, is that you, Pastor Eddie? And you know what he did? He, lift, he, he was in on a cane. He was an older man. He comes in on a cane and he lifts up his cane and he says, preach the word, Jane. So he goes over and he sits down and I'm preaching and I start thinking about this word he gave me, preach the word and signs will follow, preach the word and signs will follow. And so as soon as I I wrapped up preaching and I I said, brother Eddie, could you come up? Could I just prophesy to you? I got to prophesy to the guy that prophesied to me. And as I'm prophesying to him, the Lord starts saying, and the Lord says that I'm, I'm healing the circuitry that's in your brain. There's been some interruptions in the circuitry of your brain. And he must not have been around prophecy because he kept, like, talking to me the whole time I was prophesying. Have you ever been around people that, like, talk to you? They have, like, a running commentary. Oh, yeah, God's talking about And I'm just, like, I'm trying to prophesy, okay? And (laughs) he just just kept talking. And so so when I talk about the circuitry of your brain, he goes, yeah, I I just had two. He said, I had two strokes five years ago. And and as I'm prophesying and going, okay, that's good, okay. And the Lord would say, and I'm just kind of trying to stay in the flow here. Uh, And then I just kind of stop and I said, you know, Brother Eddie, you gave me a word 40 years ago that said I would preach the word and signs would follow. I'm activating that word right now. I said, there's a miracle God wants to do in your body. I said, to restore what's been taken by this stroke. What is it? And he said, well, ever since I've had the stroke, he says, I've had no use or feeling in my left arm. It just hangs. There's nothing I can do about it. And so I said, I believe the word of the Lord. You know, we need to war with the prophetic word. Sometimes it's not even warring for ourselves. Sometimes it's taking that, that word and using it as a weapon, using it as a tool in the spirit. So I said, you know what? You gave me a word 40 years ago 
I'll preach the word and signs will fall. I activate that right now. And I, and I begin to decree to him complete healing and restoration. And in front of God and everybody that night, within seconds, God completely regenerated his arm. So, so get this. He gave me a word that changed my life. Forty years later, he reaped from that word. And it changed his life. Look at the God. How, how you can't make this stuff up. 